Oh man, do I love food. The LA Times even took notice after I ate at Hugo's nearly every day for 32 years. It was just blocks from my home in West Hollywood. And now I've moved to the motion picture and television fun here in Woodland Hill. And my obsession for good meals continue to simmer. Join me as I explore our food options here on the Wasserman campus. Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to the original foodie. And I would like you to meet my very special guest, please. Say hello to Miss Nancy Kwan. Hi, Nancy. Hello, Phil. Hello, everyone. You? Thank you. Now, those of you who don't know, you know, Nancy used to teach Tai Chi here on the campus. So she's very familiar with the campus, yes. with its setup, and is quite a foodie in her own right. So we are welcoming her to a segment of the original foodie. And uh, Nancy, I guess you've eaten all over the world. I mean, is there any place you haven't eaten? What about the MPTF? Oh, well, you come here and we will feed you. <laughs> no, that no, no, no I, I mean, I, I love to travel and I love to eat, yes. And I always feel that whenever I go to a, a new place, or somewhere I haven't been before, or whatever, I try to eat the local food. Because, you know, by eating local food, you get to know the people better, the environment, sure. and the culture, and everything else. So that's important for me, that wherever I go, I eat, or at least sample the local food. How many languages do you speak, Nancy? Um, uh, not that many, a, a couple, a few. Chinese, English, and all that stuff. I, you know, I did a show with uh, Phil Rosenthal, who is a producer, and he does a wonderful food show called Somebody Feed Phil. And he, like yourself, is eaten all over to, all over the world. And he went and he was in Marrakesh, and he was in Italy and France and Moscow and all that. Came back to the United States by way of San Francisco, ate in San Francisco, and got food poisoned. Oh. oh. <laughs> of all the, yeah, one of those crazy things. It is so, crazy. You mean he went around the world, it was okay, then he got to San Francisco, ate the food there. I hope it's not Chinese food. Mm. <laughs> no, 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 it wasn't. But tell me something, I'm sure because of the traveling that you've done, you must somehow Pace yourself in the food world. Whether maybe there's something that you don't eat in the morning that you eat at lunch, or you eat a bigger breakfast, or a smaller lunch, a large dinner. Tell us about that. Well, I eat the same breakfast, and I have been eating. We have been eating the same breakfast for years. Um, I eat puffins, which is Barbara's puffins. It only has six sugar. And then I add in banana and apple and blueberries and strawberries, whatever the fruit is in season. And um, I don't, I can't take milk, so I drink almond milk, uh, uh -huh. unsweetened. And that's been my breakfast for years. I really uh -huh. enjoy it, and um, and I, I mean it's not it's not you know because just for health because I really enjoy it. It's a light. It gives me enough energy as a light breakfast and not so fruit. Sure. And where have you enjoyed food? I mean, I know you, is there a particular place in the United States or China or uh, oh. Europe that you've enjoyed food? Well, I love uh, Los Angeles because it's such a melting pot. I mean, yeah. we have so many different nationalities here, so you can get the different restaurants. And um, I like to, you know, I'm kind of uh, open to whatever, food that, is, uh, that I would like to try. I'm, I'm not squirmish about eating certain foods. So, I mean, I would try it once. If I don't like it, I just don't go back again. But there are lots of good restaurants in uh, LA alone. Oh, maybe I'll put in a plug for my girlfriend. She owns a restaurant, a Chinese restaurant in uh, Beverly Hills. It's called Joss. And then she owns Joss Bites. So there are two restaurants side by side, Joss and Joss Bites. Really good food, kind of high-end Chinese food. 
Is it, is that, is it J-O-S? S, two, J-O-S-S. -S. And then in the valley, uh, because yes. we live in the valley, and right. um, there's a, like a neighborhood Chinese restaurant that I go to, which is also very good, and I frequent it, and I would like to give it a plug. Mm. It's the Bamboo Cuisine on Ventura Boulevard. Good food. Uh, Ventura and whereabouts? I think like Hazeltine around there. Okay, okay. The it's in German right. notes. You could be a huge help to us, Nancy, if you would recommend a, rest, a Chinese restaurant in our neighborhood here in Calabasas. Well, why don't I do some research and I'll get back to you for that. That would be very nice. I know, you know, they ask me all the time about a oh. Chinese restaurant and I... I, you know, I can go back to West Hollywood and to Hollywood and whatnot, but yeah. I have no idea out this far. Yeah, I don't because, you know, I live uh, closer to like Sherman Oaks and Encino, and so it's not that far, but I will uh, do some research and get back to you. There's a ton of restaurants in Sherman Oaks. I mean, all kinds. Yes. So, and you frequent... Uh, uh, yes. No, I think that's that's wonderful. I feel very bad about the folks in the restaurant business because of yes. what they have most recently been through. That's it's true. been a terrible one, and we have to, yes, yes, and we have to support them and keep sending out information to them so that they know that we, we miss them and we want to participate. I started to do the show based on restaurants. And uh, in the last oh, dozen shows, I have decided to talk to celebrities like yourself, uh, who have traveled the world, have traveled to the United States, and have a certain sense of food. Uh, most of the people that I've talked to love to eat. You know, they all have a great appetite and, and enjoy eating. And it's interesting sometimes of what they eat because so much has changed uh, on the sets, you know, now with uh, craft services, is, is it's there, but it's nothing like it used to be. And uh, you spend a lot of time in your dressing rooms. You can't move around sets. Uh, so the, the restrictions are quite something. And uh, it's changed, well, just all of our lifestyles. We, we, are just, we are just getting back to dining in the dining rooms. For 14 months or so, we were, you know, being served food in our rooms. Oh, and yeah. Yes, and, and not allowed to dine together. But all of that has been relaxed. And it's, it's opening up. It'll open up to visitors soon, and we'll, the campus will start jumping again. We're slowly getting into programs and uh, bus trips, and so all of that is, uh, is coming along very nicely. So where have you found yourself of late? Have you been out of the country in the last few months at all? No, no, we decided not to travel. Um, right. Normally I would be going to Hong Kong or maybe not, not Hong Kong anymore because of the political situation there at the moment, but traveling around somewhere. Uh, but we, you know, we stopped traveling and going back to the restaurants, I do try to support the restaurants and get takeout and, or they deliver which is a good thing because I, 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 I do agree with you. They've been suffering a lot and it's a terrible thing, but it's for, you know, everyone's in the same boat. And so we have to try and support each other. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's, it's very good that we uh, have, have done those things. I was, I was talking to, uh, last week I did a show with Joe Montagna and, and uh, I didn't realize, but he, he had opened uh, a pizza parlor for his wife Ooh. about 16 years ago yeah. in, in Burbank. Uh, and it was called The Taste of Chicago, Joe being from Chicago. Yeah. And all pre-COVID, they just said, you know, they've done all they can. They've 
cook all they can. They've seen as many customers as they can. So they, they closed it up. And this was before all this mess happened. So they were fine. And uh, so we reminisced about the deep dish Chicago pie uh, and, and pizzas. And it's, it's really something. Because as you know, there are a lot of entertainers who have sort of fallen into the restaurant world. Yeah. You know, backing places, running places. Uh, and, and that's always me. Yes, yeah, it's a very difficult business. Very, very difficult business. But you know, Phil, I, I find, that, like you mentioned, pizza, let's say it's Italian mm -hmm. food. I've been to Italy quite a few times. The food tastes so different here, Italian food, as uh, in Italy. It, it doesn't taste the same at all. I don't know if it's the water, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's the, uh, the oils they use, or what, what do you think it is? It, it tastes, for me anyway, it tastes quite different. It, no, I agree with you. I, uh, when I was in uh, Italy in 1969, I had a client doing a movie for Dino De Laurentiis then. And, uh, mm -hmm. Their pizza, as we knew it in Rome anyway, was a totally different. It, it looked different. It was very, very thick. And uh, very, yes. And, and then it had to toppings on it and whatnot. Yeah. The, the, the pastas were... I mean, I learned pastas. I mean, I knew spaghetti, but who knew linguine and fazuli and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and all of these other kinds of pasta. I learned that in, in Rome. And I learned that some of these mom and pop restaurants in Rome were just sensational. Yeah, that's just right. Sensational. But it, it's a totally different world. They, they cook different. Uh, they're... The water is different. The ground is different. Uh, oil too, because even the olive oil or whatever they use all of you know, the oil, it, it tastes quite different. It, well, yes, it does. And you know, even though we get some of their things that come imported to this country, uh, yeah. it it never tastes like it did there. That's right. And it's not going to taste like it does here. It just. It, it just doesn't. It, it's, I found that to be true with the, the many areas that uh, I have traveled. When I, when I went to Israel, for example, mm -hmm. to a, a Jewish deli, well, a Jewish deli is a, an American invention. Yes. I mean, yeah, I mean they, they, they don't know from Jewish delis in Israel like we know Jewish delis here. Yeah. Uh, late, I would think it's, it was a little more popular, but I'm talking 1969, and uh, no, it was just, it was a totally different world. But uh, pizza, the, what is it, uh, in Nepal, Italy, if I've got the right, if I've got the city right, there is a city in Italy that makes nothing but pizzas. And they are pizzas that we are used to seeing visually. They're mm -hmm. small, 8, 10 inch, and very limited to what they put on it because everybody sort of adds their own thing. Yeah. And it's not like the American where you've got 12 ingredients. <laughs> you know, there are <laughs> they're, they're very few ingredients, but uh, I have never... In my limited traveling, I have never tasted the food in a foreign country and have come back to the United States and gone to that kind of restaurant and sampled the same food. No, it's... Uh, I agree it's, with you. I agree with you completely. Mm -hmm. it's, it's totally, totally, totally different. We, we've Americanized uh, so many things and... It's, it's, uh, that's why it seemed like Chinese food. You know, if, if I eat in Hong Kong, I mean, or it, the, the Hong Kong, I mean, the Chinese food in Hong Kong is, tastes so different than the Chinese food here. You know, it's, sure. uh, I guess it's catered and so maybe it has to be prepared for the American taste. You know, so. mm -hmm. Well, you know, if you go down, I'm sure you probably have been to Chinatown, which is a great yeah. example of. Okay. Well, they have a, now a lot of Vietnamese restaurants in Chinatown. If you really want good Chinese food, you have to go to Alhambra or Monterey Park there. 
they have some pretty good restaurants there. A lot of good seafood mm -hmm. restaurants. I've, I've been down to Chinatown for years and it's, it slowly has changed. And now it's gone, it has more, I think, Vietnamese restaurants and a few Chinese restaurants I used to frequent have now closed in Chinatown, so. Mm -hmm. Do you but have a favorite? Sum. You know what is dim sum? Um, yes, dim sum. yeah, oh, I love that, that's wonderful. Yeah, they, they yeah. have some pretty good ones there. Yes, they do, and I've had the pleasure on a Sunday morning to go down and uh, dim sum. I'll never know how they keep track of what they put on your table and add it to your check to <laughs> see. Hopefully it balances, but I, I just don't know how they do it. They, no, it, never... it, that's why it's very interesting the way they stamp it, actually. And yes. you, 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 you know, they, they push the carts around. You can choose the food that you want to eat, little bites. Right. And in some this mm -hmm. little bites or touch the heart is called in translation. Uh, and um, it's, it's, uh, they, they stamp it in a certain way that don't know exactly what you ordered. It's true. And because the room is like busy, it's a huge room usually, and lots of carts and people pointing everywhere, and you know, children running around. But that's typical eating a dim sum lunch. I went with a friend, and we would go into Pasadena for dim sum on Sundays, and it was wonderful. I mean, really, really wonderful. Have you some favorite American restaurants that you've sort of fallen in love with over the years? American restaurants? Yes. Uh, such as, I didn't know there were, nowadays, you know, this, uh, what would you define as an American restaurant, Phil? What would they non serve? Non-Chinese food. <laughs> Anything? <laughs> yeah, because yeah. no, you, you don't know your point is well taken. The restaurants today, they serve a, a million euros. Oh, they're all over the place. The delicatessens. Lovey's Deli, which is right around the corner. Oh, I me. heard your, I saw your program. I really enjoyed that. And I intend to visit that deli, by the way. Oh, well, his, his thing is they brought in Mexican food into the Jewish deli. Oh, I know. That was an idea of his son, and they have a whole yeah. page on Mexican food. Did it work? So, yes, yes, they're still there. They're doing well. He has three places. One is Lovey's. His name is Alex Lovey, and he does that with his son. And he has two other delis in the valley. Yeah. That are that have other names: Country Deli, uh, and then there's uh, one other I forget at this point. And I see Jen is plugged in. Hi, Jen. Hi. hi. It's so good to see you both, and I've enjoyed listening to the conversation. Dim sum is one of those things that. Um, I, I find uniquely Los Angeles because I grew up on the East Coast and it wasn't really readily available where I'm from. I know it's global, but whenever I think dim sum, there are a couple of places in Chinatown that I just can't wait to get back to. Mm -hmm. um, we New, have, York, New York has some very good uh, dim sum restaurants. Yeah, yeah I'll have to um, check that out yeah. next time I'm on that coast. Uh, we have got to get this wrapped up so that um, we can get on to our new, our next show. We've got a poetry show on Fridays at 1 p.m. But oh, this okay. has been such a joy. Um, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it is time to wrap it up. I'm going to leave so that Phil can give you his classic closing line. Okay. All right. Nancy, I thank you again, and let me invite you back. We'll do another show if uh, hopefully you will come back and join us. Love and it. thank you so much. And I would like to sign off till we eat again. Lovely, lovely. <laughs> thank you, Nancy, very much. Thank you very much.